This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in northeast Mississippi on the Tom Bigby River called Columbus. Sometimes I write about the rest of the state. Today, I'm continuing on a topic that unfortunately uh, still requires attention, and it's Nancy Carpenter and what is going on with the Tennessee Williams building, which is the Columbus Welcome Center for the Columbus Cultural Foundation Board. The Tennessee Williams Building and Visitor Center is usually the first place tours stop to see the home and gather maps and flyers, etc., to learn about our town's history, our hotels and restaurants, and of course, to find out about other points of interest. Unfortunately, the Tennessee Williams building has been closed since mid-April with no sign of when it might reopen. With the exception of the required MDAH restoration grant sign and a hastily sorry we are closed sign in 14 font on a little sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper on the inaccessible front door and another on the back door, there's no indication of when the Columbus Cultural Foundation Board and their CEO, Nancy Luke Carpenter, plan to reopen the building. All construction on the front porch has currently halted, and the back exterior is undergoing some painting and scraping and repainting with the same faded school bus yellow paint that probably has former historian Sam Coy rolling in his grave on the daily. The clapboard siding on the building is failing, falling, and rotting in multiple areas of the building. The head beams that the porch should attach to are rotten and appear to have significant termite damage. The porch has been ripped off and the front porch roof is currently propped up on the actual metal scaffold and the scaffold is stacked precariously uh, on each metal foot of, of the scaffold on a stack of cattywampus cinder blocks. The front corners of the building are wrapped in what appear to be plastic bin liners cut open to create more coverage. Unfortunately, these have not even been secured properly, and they are flapping and ripping in the wind. The gingerbread trim hangs broken and by a thread. And then let's not forget what looks like a crime scene with the, the yellow caution tape wrapped all around the front porch. The entire place looks unkept and abandoned and the restoration work, and I put restoration in quotes, looks shoddy at best on the exterior. How did the building get in such bad shape to begin with? The building until just two years ago was under the care of Carpenter as the director of the CVB. She was responsible for the CVB building, the Muscle White building, the Historic Elks Club building, and the Tennessee Williams building in that position. She let the Muscle White Building awnings rot, the Elks Club roof and porch rot, and caused significant damage to the upstairs gorgeous tin ceiling and magnificent ballroom wooden floors. She wrote grant after grant to convert the Elks Club into a children's museum, but never spent a dime of the money that was awarded in those grants to actually prepare the building for such a venture. <clears throat> nor to do any repairs. No one is really sure what she actually did with those funds. They were awarded from organizations where she sat on the board, just like she does at the MDAH, who was currently funding the Tennessee Williams work. Remember, she's the MDAH board's vice president. So no one holds her accountable for how the money is ever used. A bunch of self-licking ice cream cones are what these grants are. This, this past year's arts and antiques fiasco with the Rosenzweig created the panic that led to opening the Elks Club and the CVB dumping $40,000 plus into getting the downstairs ready for a show that lost money and was extremely poorly attended due to Carpenter's failure to do any real advertising or promotional work until just a couple of weeks before the event. These are all things that led to her being forced into retirement from the CVB and which for some reason got her awarded the directorship at the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation, which is the Tennessee Williams Building. One of the earlier podcasts I wrote covers 
that expensive boondoggle of the arts and antique show and Carpenter's demise as the director of the CBB. That brings us back to the Tennessee Williams building. Carpenter failed to exercise a previous grant from three years ago to repair the Welcome Center's front porch. Why? Perhaps she could not find a way to personally benefit financially. That would be my guess. Or maybe she's just incompetent and has no clue how to manage grants. Or maybe it's just a combo of the two. <clears throat> you place your bet on that one. Regardless, why was the porch allowed to almost collapse before anything was done? <clears throat> why was the porch a $40,000 job at that point? We're talking a two over two. We're not talking a fancy house of large proportion. This all seems very exorbitant, considering at that point, they had no clue of the structural rot recently found. Perhaps if that work had been done, then the early signs of damage would have been discovered and the damage mitigated at that point, thus saving the foundation tens of thousands of dollars. The work prior to discovery of rot was slated currently at $230,000. That includes some interior work and repainting and the uh, repair of the porch. The additional work uh, required to repair rot is now allegedly estimated at an additional $190,000 plus. If that's true, at what point does the cost of repairs exceed the value of the building? The building is currently valued at $400,000. Sounds like somebody's getting ready to be upside down in a house. And where will the additional funding come from to actually cover that $190,000 plus? Dollars? Will it come from the CVB share of the 2% tax? The city, county, another grant? We know that grants take time to find, to write, and get approved. Will Nancy convince the MDAH board to just magically find another almost $200,000 to put in the building? Now, if the CVB is smart, they will offer to help the, the board at the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation come up with funding, but only if they remove Carpenter as the CEO and director. It is unconscionable that the foundation keeps Carpenter on at its, at its helm, considering this, ex, this exorbitant amount to repair this building. I wrote a letter to the board of the foundation two days ago and have yet to get any response to, uh, to some really pointed questions about their lack of transparency on this quote restoration project. I wrote the following. The Tennessee Williams building has been closed since mid-April and shows little sign of opening anytime soon. Is there an ETA on when this project will be complete? We have had multiple groups of visitors come through our town only to find the center closed and no access anywhere in town to the flyers, information tracks, etc. for our community. There is not even a sign that indicates roughly when restoration efforts will be complete. The building looks abandoned and as if it should be condemned. I'm frankly shocked at the deplorable condition the building was allowed to fall into under the watch of their director. I am further shocked at how poorly the restoration project is progressing and the lack of transparency your board and your CEO have maintained with the community. It is public knowledge additional rotten decay was discovered in the building. However, not one word has been made official by your organization. This does not bode well for good faith in your board's leadership or that of your CEO. At this time, now, the understood amount to restore the house exceeds the actual estimated value of the home. Don't you think it's time to come clean to the public on what additional work remains to be bid? What is the status of the current work and the final cost of the project and where that funding is coming from? You are the stewards of this historic project. And at this time, it appears you have no idea what you are doing and why you should continue to be entrusted with state and local monies. It is an incredibly poor reflection on your board and our community. What is the current estimated cost of restoration? What is the estimated date of completion? What alternatives have you created to help visitors to our town to find information on our town and tours? How do you plan to fund the additional restoration costs and how do you plan to find the matching funds required for the first grant and now possibly a second grant? 
How are you supporting your now unemployed docents who depended on the financial support your jobs there provided? Our community and our tourists deserve better. And I signed it by my name. As a publication of this episode, not one member has responded. We still have no idea when their project should be complete, how they will fund additional repairs, or when it will reopen. Heck, they haven't even told the community about the additional issues with the building and the emergency super secret visit from board members of MDAH about two weeks ago, right after the additional rotten ruin was discovered. Why all the secrets? What else are they hiding? Why on earth are they such crappy stewards of their building, the only asset they own? Y'all need to email that board and ask some more tough questions, some I haven't even thought of. I'll put the board's email addresses in the show notes. Thank you for coming on my tour of Columbus, Mississippi, and listening to my concerns about the deplorable condition of the Tennessee Williams birthplace. Until next time.